Disclaimer. All drone footage seen in this video was graciously provided by my friend Andrew of the Cleveland District Railfan YouTube channel. I highly encourage you to head on over to his channel and check out his coverage of this day. A link will be posted in the description and in the pinned comment. On the morning of Friday, August 4th, 2023, the Painesville Railroad Museum, in association with Interstate Towing, scheduled the move of their new boxcar, CSX 16903, to the museum property. We arrive in Painesville at the same time as CSX westbound I-157 as we turn onto Railroad Street. We can see the foundation and the trucks for the boxcar later in the day. This boxcar was donated to the museum in early 2022, but was stored in Fairport, Ohio, at the Horizon Rail Leasing Yard. The ballast and track for the boxcar was laid in mid-2022, and the trucks were added a few weeks ago in late July, in preparation for the move. Driving north into Fairport, we can see what remains of the old Fairport, Painesville, and Eastern Railway, as well as the now radioactive fields of the once giant Diamond Shamrock facility located here, but that's a topic for another video. Driving along Fairport Nursery Road, we come across the crew of trucks and museum members getting the boxcar ready for delivery. The 60-foot waffle-style boxcar was built in 1977 for the Seaboard Coastline Railroad and eventually fell into ownership of CSX, who continued to use the boxcar until 2014, when it was retired from service and donated to a private owner, who subsequently donated it to the Painesville Railroad Museum. The museum itself was originally built along the extensive route of the Lakeshore, Michigan and Southern in 1893 and saw regular passenger service up until May of 1971. After attaching the boxcar securely to the trailer, they depart for the museum. Soon, the police escort guides the boxcar out of the yard and onto the main roads. The route they would be taking would be relatively easy, with only one major obstacle. The obstacle in question would be the 14-foot high bridge over North State Street, but we will get into that a little bit later. We set up at the intersection of Fairport Nursery Road and East Street to watch the move cross over the Norfolk Southern Fairport Branch, the old Fairport, Painesville, and Eastern.
I quickly found out that it was rather hard to chase a police escorted train on the road rather than a normal train on the tracks. So we just went straight to the museum property to watch the action. Along North St. Clair Street, the move would experience a delay due to an illegally parked driver on the wrong side of the road. A tow truck was quickly dispatched and the car was moved, and they were back on their way to Painesville. Approaching the Painesville Railroad Museum property, the movers face another challenge. This is the North State Street Bridge, where the CSX Erie West subdivision crosses overhead. The bridge height itself is 14 feet, and the combined height of the truck and load was 13 feet and 9 inches. The movers would have to very carefully maneuver underneath the bridge through a series of hydraulics lifting the trailer up and down. After just barely squeezing through, the truck would have to back down Railroad Street, as the turn would be too tight to navigate otherwise. After some adjustments, the truck and boxcar would arrive at the unloading site on the far westernmost side of the museum property. Railroad Street was lined with civilians, workers, and railroad enthusiasts all here to watch the action unfold. Once the space between the railroad trucks had been measured to be correct, two more crane trucks pulled into position to unload the boxcar. Once the crane trucks were in the right spot for unloading, the boxcar was backed into position.
The booms were lifted up in the air and cables put into position in order to lift the boxcar. Seconds after the boxcar got lifted into the air, eastbound CSX I-158 blasts by on the Erie West subdivision bound for New Jersey. On the trucks are these small little pins that go into the base of the boxcar. The crane operators would need to set the boxcar down on these pins exactly, and they must be very skilled in order to pull this off. After about 15 minutes, the boxcar is in its final resting place for now. After the boxcar was set on its track and the crowd cleared, we went inside the museum to cool off. The museum has really shaped up well since I started going here in 2010, and is always a great place to learn about the history of railroading in Northeast Ohio.
I would like to thank everybody for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. Also, one more shout out to Andrew from Cleveland District Railfan for letting me borrow some of his drone footage for this production.